Bobby. So I was doing some research this week and I was thinking about um, decision making. A lot of times in any given day, I will be conscious of six or eight or 10, maybe 12, 15 decisions that I'm making that would have any significance of all, at all. Most of the time when I'm thinking about it, though, my decisions aren't really conscious. There's a lot of unconscious decisions that I make. And so I was just doing a little bit of research um, this week to get at, in an average day, what an adult person in terms of their decision making makes. And we're not going to be able to go back and forth just because of the nature of, of where we are. We'll do that towards the end of our service. But I want you to just think in your mind, if you were to make a wild guess at the average amount of decisions that you would make every day, how many would that be? So after you give that some thought, I want you to hear what my research has borne out for me. So I did a little bit of study into this and I found that the average adult makes about 35,000 conscious decisions every single day. It kind of gives you a headache if you think about it. I mean, 35,000 decisions, it's pretty astonishing. Well, anyway, to help us out, Amazon and Apple have come up with the brilliant idea of giving us digital personal assistants like Siri and Alexa to help us out with our decision-making, like things like you know travel plans or meal prep or clothing choices based on the weather, even mindless trivia, you know? Whatever the question is, they seem to have a lot of answers for it. And they were created to give us this information so that we would make better decisions. Because let's face it, with 35,000 decisions to make each day, we could all use a little bit of help. However, as helpful as Alexa and Siri may be, there are some questions that even they cannot answer. And so over the next five weeks, what I want to do is give you five life-changing questions that when you personally ask and answer will not only lead to greater clarity, but also better decisions and fewer regrets in every area of your life. So anybody interested in greater clarity, better decision-making and fewer regrets? I would hope that you are. So think with me about the last decision, for example, that you made, could be as recent as this morning. The last decision that you made that you would like to unmake. The last decision that if you had a do-over, you wished you would do it differently. Now, as you think about whatever that decision was, I want you to think about why it is that you would unmake it. Why would you do it differently? Was it a professional decision? Was it a personal decision? Perhaps it was embarrassing or maybe even worse, it left scars. Truth of the matter is nobody sets out to blow up a marriage. Nobody intends to raise irresponsible children. Nobody hopes one day to grow up and be an addict. But behind every regrettable reality are a series of decisions that have led us to where we are. Nobody plans to complicate their life with bad decisions. But unfortunately, too many of us don't plan not to. And as we write the story of our lives, every decision we make becomes a permanent part of our story. And so with every decision, we should consider what story is it that I want to tell? Because we tell our stories one decision at a time. So this morning we began with what is the first question in a series of five that I will ask you over the next several weeks. And that question is what we will call the integrity question, which is this. The question is, am I being honest with myself? And then we pause and say, really? Am I being honest with myself, really? When making decisions, we have to operate from a place of honesty because 
Every single time we're dishonest with ourselves, it erodes our credibility and so too our authority. You see, every lie we tell needs a false narrative to prop it up so that we can salvage our ego and our reputation. That's why the first step in recovery deals with rigorous honesty, because dishonesty fuels all of our addictions. Every addiction sits at the tail end of a series of decisions fueled and protected by a false narrative that begins mostly as true, but erodes from there. Nothing changes until we are brutally honest with ourselves. We have to tell ourselves the truth, even if the truth makes us feel bad about ourselves, because there are far worse things that can happen to us than simply feeling bad about ourselves. So before we make a decision of any importance, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is, am I being honest with myself? And then ask it again. But the second time we add the word to it, really. Am I being honest with myself, really? So, for example, why am I doing this, really? Why am I avoiding him? Why am I avoiding her, really? Why do I keep making excuses, really? Why did I say yes to that when I didn't want to? Why can I not say no, really? Why did I buy that? What's the real reason that I don't call my kids, that I don't call my mom, that I don't call my dad or my brother or my sister? Really? Now, I have to warn you in advance that this question is not very easy to answer. And the reason is because we're not always looking for the truth. There's been a lot of research that's done in this area. And what they found is that all of us are prone to fall victim to what they call confirmation bias, which is the tendency to look for information that supports what we already believe and reasons to support what we already are inclined to do. Confirmation bias empowers us to see what we wanna see, to hear what we wanna hear and tune out everything else to the contrary. If we want something to be true badly enough, the stars magically align, at least in our heads anyway. And all of the contrary, all of the information to the contrary gets filtered out because most of us want to be proven right far more than we want to know the truth. It's a tough pill to swallow, but that's what the bulk of research suggests. Look no further than our maddening political debates or the last relationship that went wrong or the last poor purchasing decision that you made. A lot of times we don't want to know the truth. We just want to be right. And that has to change. But this is not just a recent phenomenon. It's been going on for thousands of years. It's in fact what was going on with Pontius Pilate in Matthew 27, which shall be read to us earlier. Pilate knew that the charges that were leveled against Jesus were unjust. He even received a divine warning about the decision that he was about to make. But political expediency took precedence over justice. He knew that what the crowd was goading him into doing was wrong. He knew it. He knew it so much so that he actually tried to talk them out of it. But when that didn't work, what did he do? He abdicated responsibility for a decision that was clearly his to make. He did not listen to his gut. He would not listen to his wife. Instead, he just simply absolved himself from making the decision that was squarely his to make. And he handed Jesus over to the crowd to be beaten and tortured and killed. Why wouldn't Pilate listen to his conscience? Why wouldn't he listen to his wife? Why don't you listen to your conscience? Why don't you listen to those people in your life who are giving you advice that would serve you well if you listened. Pilate knew the right decision, but still he didn't make it. 
if only he would have had the integrity and asked himself the question, am I being honest with myself about the decision that I need to make here? Really? If he would have done this, his story would read so much differently. And so would ours. History tells us that most people have a hard time being honest with themselves. I just want to say this morning, don't be most people. Make the decision today and tomorrow and the next and the one after that, that you will not lie to yourself, even if the truth hurts or is hard to swallow. Because truthfully, we will never get to where we need to be until we acknowledge where we actually are. All of us are writing a story. The question is, how would you like for yours to read? As you think about that, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in places from all over this country and world to spend this time together, to be in this space, to hear the scriptures, to think about our lives, and to be honest with what we see. So often it is difficult to look ourselves in the mirror and to ask ourselves the question, am I being honest? Am I telling myself the truth? And if I am, what is it about this decision that has become so difficult for me to make, even though I know it's the right one to make? I ask as we begin a new series that you would help us as we are putting questions in place to help us make wise decisions and live with fewer regrets, that we would begin by laying this first question of integrity down and being honest with ourselves, no matter how much it may hurt. And in advance, Lord, we look forward to what you will do because as we make better decisions, Lord, we look forward to the day where we live with less and less regret. May everything we do honor you and be a blessing to this world. In Christ we pray. Amen.